little bit the why we've been doing this. I just want everybody to be motivated. Motivation is the key to get through some of the classes that we are going through. This class uh, is about how to use an expandable baton. My name is uh, Staff Sergeant Oliveira. This is my unit. I've been here about a year. If you're motivated, the class is probably not going to be as boring as it's supposed to be, or it could be. I will do my best to uh, make it a little exciting. I have some slides that are really good in my way to go. I'm in the National Guard, I'm not active. So, in my civilian world, I'm a correctional sergeant. I work in a prison, maximum security prison. They also call it a close custody. In other words, I was I work with the worst inmates, people that committed the worst crime you can ever think of. I've been there for over six years. As a correctional supervisor, I have about ten correctional officers that I work in my unit. That I uh, and it's uh, part of my job to make sure we are all well trained with our equipment. One of the equipment that we use is the expandable baton. It's not the only, but it's one of the ones that we use. And I thought this is my opportunity to teach this class how to basically use it. You know, I cannot teach you the effective, the best way to use it, but I can teach you to use it just to be able to use it. That when you buy your own baton, you can be proficient at it, you can be better at it. Kind of practice and use it. So this is what an expandable baton looks like. There are so many different kinds of batons. There are the ones that doesn't expand, so they're not called expandable baton because they're rigid, they're long. That's the way they are. They don't expand, they don't collapse. These ones are called expandable because uh, they expand. They can expand and they can collapse. And based on the slide that you're looking at in your class right now, it's kind of giving you, giving you like a just formal and simple way to kind of understand what an expandable time is. You have the long end, this is the end, the long portion. Very simple. This is where you grip it. Grip portion. This is where you handle it. This is where you hold it at. And the grip hand. And as we go on in this class, I will have the opportunity to tell you more about each pad and where how you're used to the functions and what is there. For instance, the grip hand there is a knot, knot right there that you may need to use when you collapse your baton. Or the long hand need to use when you pull out your baton. But we'll get there in the class. So the baton extends and also collapse. And when we go on the class, I will, we will teach as part of the our learning today to know how to collapse it and how to expand it. Also, before I move on, what I want to point out about the use of the expandable baton or any other baton is that, well, if we live in the state of North Carolina, and for those of you who are who are living here in the state of North Carolina, there are no laws restricting the use of a possession of expandable batons or other similar weapons in the state of North Carolina. Now, with that being said, there are states. United States now they have laws that prohibit the use or the possession of expandable baton. And I can give examples there are California, Delaware, Hawaii, and Massachusetts. And this is according to the research that I have done, and uh, there's a website called myselfdefense.com. Now, if you're from another state and you like this class or you are interested in having an expandable baton, I suggest that you do a little research on yourself to know if there is open carry or concealed carry of uh, expanding baton in your state. As 
an individual, we it's first I want you to understand that we live in a very dangerous world. There are bad people out there, yeah. evil people out there, and people with intention and goals to take advantage, deprive and take away from other people that appears to be defenseless. So with this being said, I want you to know that there is no duty to retreat from an attacker who seeks to take advantage of you. You don't have to run away from nobody. You don't have to beg for your life. You don't have to be attacked, to be abused, to be, I mean, if you're a female, to be raped, if you're a male, to be raped in this world that we live in today. So, you have the right uh, to defend yourself. All these aggressors out there that want to deprive you of life, liberty, and happiness. And you have the right to defend that of life, that liberty, and your happiness. Therefore, your body can do so much, can defend yourself. You have that instinct in you to always want to defend yourself. You have the instinct in you to always want to defend your family, your loved one, even a victim on the side of the road that you don't know. Um, so if you're walking there and you happen to be carrying a baton in you, either you're in the state of North Carolina, you have, you have a right to open carry a baton, and somebody want to attack, attack your girl, or there's somebody beating up somebody else on the side of the road about to kill them, you can pull a baton out. I mean, you can carry a weapon, you can carry uh, a pistol, you can carry a knife, but also, remember, also have another opportunity there. That's another option. It's carrying an expandable baton. So for this class, what we're going to learn by the time we leave this class is that at the end and at the completion of this lesson, you will demonstrate your ability to use an expandable baton. And I want to play that just basically use and expand it for example. Uh, we're not teaching skills, we're not trying to be perfect, we're just basically using it to expand it for example. Now I'm going to call uh, Master Sergeant Bill to read the action, condition, and standard for this class. Sure. The action will be, or is, to use an expandable baton. The condition, the classroom environment, an expandable baton, PowerPoint presentation. The standard, the students will properly deploy, deploy an expandable baton, demonstrate how to strike with an expandable baton, and then properly collapse an expandable baton. Thank you. Now we have an understanding of what we're doing in class. But before we move on, this is a requirement that we need to put out for safety purposes. We are in the Army, and we all understand safety comes first. No matter what we're doing, especially during training, we have to be safe. And even though we're in the classroom environment, everything appears to be uh, safe and stuff, but we still need to understand some important stuff. Safety comes first. Therefore, please do not lean too far forward or backward in your seats. Because failure to do so could result in chair collapsing, fail falling, cause an injury to yourself. I want you to look out for cables in order to treat hazards that may cause harms to you or damage to classroom equipment. Now, in the event of a fire, bomb threat, and the next exit is Friday and we will meet outside for a camp building. Also, I want to point out that our risk assessment uh, chart is posted at uh, the back of the class if you want to look at it, but I just want you to know that the risk label for this class is low. Also, there are no major environmental considerations uh, for this training, this class, but uh, the sound major for this academy uh, encourage that we put plastic bottle uh, recycle. So if, in case you have drinks, you can there is a recycle bag in the other class that you can put it in the uh, in that break room. Also, I want to point out the cell phone rules. Uh, the cell phone is very, very important in my class. Please make sure that the phone is in uh, vibration, silence, whatever. 
you don't have to turn it up in case you're expecting an emergency call. But in case you get an emergency call, you can step up, uh, take your call, and you can call back in. Sorry. If you're feeling sleepy, that's another thing that is disrespectful to your other student and to the instructor. You can try to stand up, stretch, drink water, um, whatever you need to do. <clears throat> also, at the end of this lesson, you will complete a multiple choice writing test. And I just want to let you know that so you can pay attention to the materials and instructions. If you have to take notes, you will be able to use your notes. Uh, you must score at least 70%. Um, now that you know all this, that you understand all this, we're going to move back to how to use an expandable photon. In the contemporary operating environment, soldiers are expected not just to be physically and mentally fit, but you're also expected to be skillful in all physical activities, including MWR activities, mental activities, you know, and uh, this also includes self-defense activities. In other words, if you are a soldier in the United States Army, you are expected to be able to defend yourself. Not just in the combat zone, even when you're home. Uh, but let's talk about even when you are in a combat situation, the rifle is gone from your hand, maybe it got blown up, your rifle is gone. Somebody's coming at you, you can stand defensively, use your knife, Use anything that you have in your hand to fight the enemy. And that is part of a defensive skill. Now, does that include how to use it? The expandable baton? Now, yes. Anything that is long enough, like a baton, can be used to fight. So let's say it's not a baton you carry while you have your IOT beat on, your weapon on, there's an explosion, your rifle flies up. There was a stick or there's some. Uh, melt or something long right there and you're coming at you, you grab that, you still be able to use it. Still be able to fight, still be able to defend yourself, neutralize the enemy. Let's move on to enabling learning objective alpha. I'm gonna call on our staff sergeant Mason to read the action foundation and for this ELO. Okay. The action is to properly deploy an expandable baton. The condition, a classroom environment with a PowerPoint presentation and expandable baton. And the standard, student will understand a good defense stance slash posture and demonstrate appropriate deployment of the expandable baton. Thank you. Like I mentioned earlier, everything we're doing in this class, the source is in accordance with the North Carolina Department of Public Safety Prison Policy Manual. And also, I got some information from Providence Police Department. You can always Google those two if you want to know more about what we learned today. Now, deploying an expandable baton. The first thing you need to learn about the point of the expanding the time, the first thing you need to understand before you should properly deploy an expanding the time is to stand in a defensive posture, defensive stance. Now, this is the step to do. Which kneels slightly bent and feet shoulder width apart. The soldier's weeks hand should be raised in a position to protect and block strike from an aggressor. Now, for this class, every demonstration, when I do a demonstration, I'll come out to the open area, and this is safety purposes, this is also added to our uh, recent segment. And when you do your demonstration, we use the same area. And now, uh, so, step number one. Your strong side, 
intent to land in the rear. In our body, we can say we have a strong side, we have a weak side, we have a, a supportive side or a strong side. So you, your strong side is the one that you use the most, that has the power in it. Most of the time, for every, most everybody, is the right hand, right leg, right shoulder, right side. Mostly the weak side, left. But some people is different. <laughs> But when you assume the defensive stance, you want your trunk to be a little backward. Uh, leg and shoulder are a little bit. The weak side or the def uh, supportive side is a little forward because you're using it to block and defend. <coughs> now, strike and attack is from the strong side, so it comes from the back. As your slide is showing right here, your support side and the leg in the front. Raise your support hand up to protect your face right here. In the demonstration, the best way is just the way I'm standing. I'm a right hand user. In other words, my right hand is my strong side. It's a little bit to the side. The weight is a little bit to the front. The feet is a pack. Raise my hand up to protect my face. The most important part of us zooming a defensive position before using a baton or an expanded baton is to yell, get back. While you're doing that is to let, not just showing non-verbally that I am defending myself, I am willing to defend myself, but it's also verbally you're saying it out to the person, get back, I'm not tolerating any attack or aggression from you. Get back! Hands up, I say what I gotta say. Now, I don't say something. Get back, man. This guy think you're playing with him. Oh, really? <laughs> but when I say it with force, then it was strong. I mean it, and you know that I mean what I'm saying. The second step now that you assume. <laughs> The defensive stance is to deploy your baton. Now, how to properly deploy a, an expanded baton? While holding the baton firmly in your hand, strong hand, flick the baton or expanded baton downward and to the rear. That is the step, that is the secret to it. You can flip it upward, you can flip it to the side, but the danger in that is that you can injure somebody else that is not an aggressor. You can injure your loved one or somebody surrounding you. You don't want to do that. You want to focus the attack on the particular person that is trying to harm you. So therefore, you want to do it right and properly. And that is, that is not the only way. You don't have to do it like that, but that, for the purpose of this class, that's how we're going to do it because it's safe and it's better. I will, I will demonstrate that. I am already in the defensive stance. Get back! The aggressors come back to me, it's still coming to me. Just flick it back. You stand like that. Now, the sound of the baton, of the expanded baton, when you flick it, and when you deploy it, is another indication to the aggressor. That is like one in step number two right there. I already told you with my mom, I already deployed my weapon that I have, the sign is there that I am going to use it. So in case somebody is recording the situation and you have to go to the court, I, prob I can guarantee you as your instructor to do that. Anybody with a common sense can look at that and there's so much point, so much step before you, that you are defending yourself and the person has so much opportunity to back away from it now. All right. Check on learning. What is the last step in a zooming a defensive stance? I'm gonna call on uh, Sam Cosper Ross. To yeah. yell, get back. Thank you, yes. That is the last step. Well, I can also call it the most important step. Uh, we, we are gonna summarize. 
I want you to understand from this here, Lord, that the main purpose of assuming a good defensive stand is to warn the aggressor that you are willing and able to defend yourself. I want you to understand that the secret to properly deploy an expandable baton is to flick it downward and to the rear. If you can put this in your memory, it will, um, it will be much safer and execute the uh, action. There are no other questions. I move to PLOB. Striking with an expandable baton. Now that we've deployed, we need to learn how to strike. I'm going to call on um, Staff Sergeant uh, Mason again to read the action, condition, and standard. The action is to de demonstrate how to effectively strike with an expandable baton. The condition is a classroom environment with a PowerPoint presentation and expandable baton. The standard is student will understand a good striking stance or posture and demonstrate an effective forward strike. <coughs> steps. Before you strike somebody, it is safer and it's more, um, it's better to be in a striking position, striking stand. Because from the striking stand, you can strike better effectively and without injuring somebody else that is not part of the situation, that is not an aggressor. That is why it is important to be in a striking stand. There's a little difference between a striking stance and defensive stance. Defensive stance is that you are just standing without a without a baton that has been deployed. Now the striking stance, now you have a baton that has been deployed already. And that's the only major difference. So we're gonna go through it again with the knees slightly bent and the feet and shoulder width apart. And it's so strong the grip portion of the right baton or expandable baton with a strong hand. Without striking out or widely swinging the baton, the expandable baton around, hitting other people, it brings the long portion up against the outer part of the strong arm or the tricep area. The soldier's weak hand should be raised in a position to protect and block strike from an aggressor. It is from this carrying position that a soldier can effectively use both and from our front strike or rear strike or forward strike or any kind of strike. It's from that position that you can do that. <coughs> so, looking at the strike, uh, uh, the slide that we have, you want to draw the, the grip portion of the right baton with the strong hand. You want to bring the long portion of the against the other part of the strong arm, you're going to raise your hand again to protect yourself. It is also important again to yell, get back. That's like warning number three right there. To yell, get back again before you try. I'll come out and show you what I'm saying. I'm already in the defensive stand. Get back! My hand's up. He didn't get back. Alright, deploy my baton. That is not enough for you. Okay. Now, you may not have time to do it sometimes, but there's a step. You may have to just go for it. You may have to go to it based on the danger that is posed to you. But for the learning purposes, these are the steps. Now I am here. Like the slide is saying, the grip portion is in my hand. It's nice in my shoulder to my side. From here, I can do all kinds of strike. Get back. I says the situation is not there yet. Get back. I can strike in the leg. If it's not that much of a bad aggressor, I can strike in the head. If it's somebody that's really coming to kill me, I can strike in the middle, depending on what I'm getting. But this position is the best. Now, Going to the next slide, where you actually slide. 
soldiers will quickly move the expandable baton across the body using the strength and, and power from the hip. Soldier will effectively strike from the strong side of the weak side. At the end of the strike, the expanded baton should be positioned under the weak side hand in preparation for the required reverse strike. Soldiers should pause and assess the situation. If the situation calls for additional strike, strike again. Remember. Strike the area that will produce most effective self-defense. <coughs> In other words, based on the attack that you receive from somebody else, decide what, what area of the body you should strike. Also, pause after the strike, a particular strike. Assess the situation before you escalate the amount of strike or before you strike again if necessary. Just guide yourself. Don't misuse this uh, weapon or this equipment right here. Don't get in trouble. Don't attack somebody unnecessarily. And this is the purpose of all these steps in this class that we're taking. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a good strike. So I'm in my stance, everything. Now I want to strike using the power of your hip, not just hand, because this can injure your hand. You can, if, you, if you're swinging it without using appropriate uh, stance and appropriate striking technique. So it's very heavy. It looks like it's not, but because I'm used to it, that's why it doesn't seem like it's heavy in my hand. But it is heavy if you're holding it for the first time. So you strike, pow! See that? That is a follow through effective strike that will send somebody back. Pow! Is it down? No, it's not. It's coming back. Pow! Do it again. Is it down? It's down. Then you can back up. Alright. Let's do a check on money. <clears throat> Which step is the most important step when executing an effective strike with an expandable baton? Make sure you ass ex assess the situation. Make sure it's safe. Yes. Make sure that you assess the situation. Maybe not the word safe, but as in that the aggressive is either down, is controlled. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's dead. Hopefully, it's not. That's not a point, but it's control. It's not posing any danger to you anymore. If he is, then you, you can strike again. That's the main point. Let's do a summary of uh, this ELO right here. What I want you to get from this ELO is before you can effectively strike an aggressive individual with a baton, you must first assume a good strike standard posture. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that after you have assumed a striking stand, if the aggressor, aggressor refuses to back away, properly execute a good strike with a standing baton. Is there any questions? All right. Any questions? And this is the last yellow. I'm going to call on Master Sergeant Beerfoot to read action, condition, but it's here. Action is to properly collapse an expandable baton. Condition, a classroom environment with a PowerPoint presentation and an expandable baton. Students will understand the steps to follow to properly collapse an expandable baton. The students will follow the steps and properly collapse an expandable baton. Thank you. So we, we deploy the baton, we use it to defend ourselves, now we gotta put it back. We gotta collapse it back so we can portable carry it, so we can continue carrying it the way it's supposed to be. And if it's part of this class, part of, so you need to learn about the baton. Um, like if you carry a, a, a pistol, you know how to fire it, you should know how to either drop the magazine, magazine or, or um, 
I mean, you just know if you use something, you should know how to put it back. So that's the point of this slide. Uh, this here, though, right here. Steps to collapse an expanded return. Step one. With the tongue or the index finger of a strong hand, soldier will press the knob at the bottom hand of the grip hand. Just like I showed you earlier what a baton looks like and where the lever is. This is the grip portion, very soft. There's a grip stuff to it, makes you grip very well so you don't fall. Now there's the knob at the back of the grip hand that you can press with either your tongue or your index finger. When I do my demonstration, I may not be able to collapse this baton with my tongue. So you will see <coughs> the in this thing, just to show you that you don't have to use your tongue. Step two, with the palm of the supported hand, or the weak hand that we talked about earlier, soldier will push the long hand closer to the grip portion. And I can show you right here, it's pushing together. After you press the knob, just push together so uh, they meet each other. If not, you may not get the result that you look for. All right? So this is what I was talking about. The baton is deployed. Now I want to I want to put it back. Put my tongue, put my weak hand support the fan right here, push it together. Again, put my uh, index finger, put it together. Check online. What do you need to be sure of before you collapse your expandable baton? Uh, some possible rocks. You make sure that the aggressor is down or that they're not bothering you. Anymore. Thank you. Yes. Based on the slide, uh, uh, what I was doing the step, it is very important. It's noted there that it's important that. You just don't collapse at the time. It's just like when you're on the field, battlefield, fighting the enemy, there's fire going on, you're shooting, pa 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 pa, you are on a semi auto or bus, wherever you are. I mean, then you suddenly just stop. While your bodies are falling or getting shot, you just stop and you put it back on safe and you eject the magazine. And you, I mean, if the threat is not over, you're supposed to keep shooting, right? You're supposed to. Still have the round in the chamber, supposed to continue to shoot. So it's the same thing. If the threat is not neutralized, it's not under control, the police is not here yet, or there's no help yet, have your baton on, even though you may be half down like that, just walking around, making sure is he standing up, looking, is he about to get back up? Is he gonna pull out a gun now? Is he gonna come with a knife now? You never, you never know. So just hold on to what you got. Or is he gonna call his friends to come help? I can tell you, you can use this to fight two or three people. As, as long as they don't have any weapon that is greater than what you have. Okay. <clears throat> Review for this is um, there are two steps in properly collapsing the baton. Press the knob at the bottom, grip hand, pushing the long hand closer to the grip portion. Try Sometimes. If the thumb is not working, you can use your index finger. Are there any questions for, for this here? Now, I will do a practical demonstration exercise. I will just show it to you without saying anything from the time. Then I will try to explain to you step by step what I did. And then we would, everybody in the class will do it one at a time. Remember to come into the cycle where there's space between you and objects and people to them to do your demonstration. Watch my demonstration. Stop! Back up!
run all day today. This is what I did. I simulated a scenario or a situation where I was working, and there's an aggressor who wants to take my wallet. I see him coming with a knife, tell him to stop. Obviously, it's not. I want the money. Deploy my baton. Carry it like I was going to use it. Stop. Back up. It's still on you. I strike him. I strike him again. Watch the situation. It's down. This control is not getting up. It's going to need an ambulance. So, therefore, I deploy my baton. Which I always If there are no other questions before we do that, is there any question? No. Okay. I'm going to call a master side there for the reception. We just do one at a time. This is a very technical equipment that makes service sometimes. When you buy it, you have to call it some other to it too. Everybody good? Is there any questions? No. All right. Let's go ahead and summarize. I mean, do a check online. See how check online. My ask this question. You know the answer. Just raise your hand. What do you need to be sure of before you collapse your expandable baton? Master. That the uh, you neutralize the situation that threats not there. Roger that. That's correct. Number two. What do you need to yell? Why do you need to yell? Get back after assuming a defensive stance or posture. Sound possible as well. To ensure that they have, that they they see that you're ready to defend yourself and you're gonna you're, you're gonna hit them if they don't. That's correct. Give it one. Uh, Question number two, why do you need to be to pass a sensitive situation before you collapse your expanding time? Start some message. Just in case um they get back up yes. to make sure their the situation is controlled before you collapse. That it. is very true and very important. That's very important. And you don't relax, you don't think you are very sure that safe um, before you relax yourself. For this class, we have learned a lot. Uh, we've learned how to use an expanding baton in a classroom using a PowerPoint presentation. Finding the time to practice, we we'll learn how to properly deploy and expand the time. I demonstrated, and you also have the opportunity to demonstrate how to strike with an expanding time. We we'll learn how to properly collapse and expand the time. Now, if, does, does anyone have any questions? If there are no questions, this concludes my class. Now, I want you to remember before you leave here that you have learned a very useful and very effective skill that can help you not just to only defend yourself and your loved one, but you can also use this skill to physically stay mentally fit and, uh, I mean, physically fit and mentally fit uh, as a soldier. All right. Now we're going to go to the evaluation portion of this class because these are the rules that I want you to understand and put in mind while we do this test. The test is the multiple choice ready test. Rule number one, you will have 10 questions on multiple choice. You must call 
70%, or at least seven out of 10 questions. You will have a maximum of 10 minutes to complete. You don't none after just 10 minutes. If you finish before that, bring, you can stay right there. If you finish the test, submit your paper to the instructor. Just remain seated, remain quiet so you can allow all the students to do the, uh, the text. You can use notes in class material. Before we begin, if anybody to use the restroom or go out, you can go now. If not, you are not allowed to leave because it's only 10 minutes maximum. So to leave, you have to complete. If you if you have to leave, that means you're done. 